Hello everybody. I want to do a recap of the week episode or whatever you want to call this vlog. <laughs> so this is for the uh, week of August 10th through the 15th. I haven't done a recap in a while so I was like all right I'm working on some other things. My focus has been kind of on that. How can I do? Okay I'll recap on what I did. So these are recaps on uh, things that I've posted on Instagram and to get people to think differently, have discussions, open-minded. So the first day was about an anecdote that I had. Um, my mother told me a story about how she bumped into a guy around the neighborhood who owned a cow farm at one time, or a farm, and had one cow. And the cow was a meat cow, and he loved it, and, you know, fed it, and blah, blah, blah. And then one day when they called the guy to, like, do the deed and kill the cow, the cow, like, frolicked to him and like you know trusted him and then died and so she was saying oh I can't do that because you know I can't see my food I can't see what happens in the process you know uh, out of sight out of mind kind of mentality and I'm like that's not even the messed up part the messed up part is you you messed with it like you messed with the cow you loved it <laughs> So it's like you kind of almost think about like all those big ranches and how they cold heartedly it's like at least they're not getting attached to the animal like they are there just to feed and now mind you i'm not pro one caged animals and blah blah blah. but at the same time it's like so sad to see this cow that thinks you know you're gonna pet it under its chin or you're gonna you know love it and then instead you just like cow poke it so i thought that was interesting just kind of you know, interesting this story. Uh, the next day I talked about modeling. Um, I got an email and modeling is dead. You know, you can model online, uh, but it's pretty dead right now. So it's kind of like all those entertainment fields, acting, um, what, why can I not think of it? Background actors, stuff like that. TV shows, theater, I got theater friends who work behind stages and all that, all closed. So they're all suffering right now. It's interesting times because the only focus, you know, the big jobs are like hospitals and, and uh, what do you call it, essential workers. Things that keep the world moving. And then, you know, people can tone down on watching a movie, so it's not essential. Just thought it was interesting because it was like, oh, things are wrapping, ramping back up. And it's like, all right, who wants some gigs come fall? Okay, okay. And then like, I don't know, a week or two later, uh, Newsom from California governor, California governor was like, nope, closing things back down. Our number's getting too high. So then get an updated email. Sorry, everything's closed. So it was just interesting that you're like, all right, maybe fall will get back to normal. Nope, looks like we're all riding this wave until the end of 2020 for sure. Then I saw a video about hard hats. This, like, what intrigued me about the video was this guy takes a construction hard hat and a like war helmet, and, like an army helmet. And what I liked about it was just I love people that do experiments. You know, they want to test something out. They just they don't go, oh, some company made this. They must have you know made it to last because that's you know, you know we live in a society where things are you know. Uh, backed up with proof and they have to go through these things and blah blah so they will make a good product as if you know there aren't loopholes and all that kind of stuff so anyway this guy tested a theory he wanted to see what helmet was stronger and luckily the military helmet was stronger <laughs> so the guy took like sticks of dynamite or like rocket or firecrackers like things that he can't obtain without being terrorist and just blew up this helmet and eventually, uh, once it got to like almost a gr grenade amount of fireworks, uh, the only thing that survived was the uh, military helmet while the construction one didn't. So I kind of joke that if you work in construction, get a military helmet. Those ones are way stronger. And then I heard on the radio, uh, I guess it'd be a Wednesday or something, but like it was, a, it was just about cancel culture and this or no, it was on a TV segment. And it was just interesting because, you know, the guy is just trying to say, like, we, and I kind of agree with this, like, 
if it's something back in like 20 years ago, stop. Stop. Like, don't, don't be that person who's like, oh my god, 20 years ago you said that? I'm like, unless it was super evil, like super, well, what constitutes evil? I don't know, like Hitler stuff or I will kill this person or just something. But like, if it's a comedian who made raunchy jokes back in the day, <laughs> Even if it's a comedian making raunchy jokes now, it's like, it, there's got to be some area where we can vent and get all these things out. We shouldn't all be PC all the time, you know? And watch this video bite me in the butt where people cancel me out because they're like, whoa, you didn't agree with my views, I'm done with you. So anyway, I just thought it was an interesting video and kind of, re I've mentioned this before, but just kind of talk about how cancel culture is a little extreme. It's very powerful. What I do like about it, the pros of cancel culture is that people have the power again, which is good. You know, you know Harvey Weinstein, you're, you're gone now because we caught up to you and finally things are getting back to you. Where it gets dumb is then like, you know, some actor I've never even heard of gets to be in an article for a day and talks about how, you know, he said something 10 years ago and I never knew who he was to begin with and he's getting canceled out and I'm like, God, I feel dumber just watching all this information that I don't care about. <laughs> so yeah, don't don't cancel people too much. Like, even when I hear a story the day of, like, I still give it time to digest. I don't immediately think they're evil because uh, it's a little weird. Then I wanted to talk about teaching online. Um, that was crazy. You know, people... I just feel bad. The, the biggest concern is like a parent would be like, I have three kids, they're all in different grades. How am I like, because technically teachers want you to sit with your kid, especially if they're younger, and focus with them so that they learn to focus. And these parents are like, well, I have three kids, two of them are really, really young and would need me to sit with them and focus. How am I supposed to do that? One, I can't be in the same room with them. Like, because they'll get distracted either way. So one's in this room, one's in that. How, how do I joke? So that part's interesting. I made the comment of like how, who would have thought that China's one child policy would actually come in handy right now? Where it's like, well, if you have one kid, it's still hard, especially if you have a job, but more manageable. And now if you have three to five kids or you're a farmer with 12, it's like, oh my, <laughs> that's, especially then if you can't afford a laptop. Like, I feel bad for people that can't afford laptops or multiple laptops or iPads or that, you know. It's like, that that comes down to a pretty penny just to get an education. And you kind of took for granted sending your kid off to this building for a teacher to kind of hobble around and teach them all in the masses. So it's really interesting times that we're in right now. And I'm betting a lot of parents are hoping this doesn't last too long. But yeah, very interesting. Uh, and then I had a fun one, simple one, where AMC Theaters currently was doing an offering for 35 cents to uh, the kind of anniversary of being around for like 100 years or something. So they're doing like the ticket price of their first admissions when they first opened. So that was interesting because it's like I asked the question, well, do they want to do that? Like, who wants to go to a theater? Who's enticed to during this pandemic to still go to a theater. And then I was told, cause I didn't do any homework. I just saw the article and I didn't care enough to really investigate. But I was like, okay. So somebody told me that you're paying for older films. So it's not even anything current as if, you know, a lot of current films are coming out anyway, but it's not like that. And then on the flip side, Mulan, the live action cartoon is uh, going to go straight to Disney plus. So you're paying for a Disney Plus subscription, and then on top of that, an additional cost to see the movie. And people aren't having that, and not having too much fun with that. Like rightfully so. It's like who, who wants to pay thirty bucks to watch it in their house, on top of the subscription fee that they're paying, and then who wants to go to a theater, and uh, possibly get sick from somebody who doesn't know they have it or doesn't care and wants to spread it or whatever. So anyway, for me, I'm all about the movie world, the movie business, all that jazz, but I know when to kind of back off. Uh, there's just bigger things. I understand people need to live. I understand if you're in the field and you need to survive, I get it. But sadly, I live off the metaphor of like, 
Well, if you're a wagon company during the automobile, you know, era, then, you know, it's not a good time to be a wagon company. So, it's just not a good time to be in the entertainment industry. Thought it was interesting that Disney, this huge company with all their Marvel movies and such, were making billions and billions, and now I think they're slowly losing actually all those billions because uh, I know that theme parks really kept them alive on top of the movies. Um, so when you don't have the theme park cash and you don't even have movies now, you are, and I'm assuming there's like certain things that you have to keep the, you know, wheels turning. So it's like they're, I think they're just losing it. I mean, I'm sure there's investments and other things keeping them afloat and plus it's Disney. So I'm sure they're not dying yet, but yeah, it's weird to be making those billions and then quickly lose them just because of a virus that's coming around. But yeah, those were all the topics. I thought it was interesting, you know, all those things. Uh, yeah, I talked a lot right now. So that was the recap. Tell me anything. Pick, pick, pick my brain. Ask questions or just, just say anything. The whole point of, like, my Instagram and, and all the social media and even this is not only to just, like, express myself, which I find to be my own heart, but also just to like hear you guys and like convey your thoughts, you know, hopefully in a non-argumentative or at least uh, one that's malicious. But um, just, just speak your piece. Tell me about anything. Tell me about just anything. People are fascinating, interesting, and it's all about getting to know you and not being in this technology that keeps us apart and stuff like that. So yeah, just... Uh, Enjoy and with all the social media, you know, hop on to it. Say hi. Say these are my thoughts. There's no dumb answers, you know. Uh, just enjoy it. Enjoy kind of stimulating your brain and making the most out of your your life. Yeah. Anyway, thanks.